Financial freedom, great health, rewarding relationships, and meaningful work are all available to every single one of us. But most of us simply don't believe it's possible. So how do we make it happen? Our guest today has taught thousands how to achieve it and is here to share the secrets to having it all. This is a story of living life abundantly with Danny Morell. Danny, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for having me. Hey, hey, let me start there. Do, do you believe we can have it all without some pain and sacrifice in it? Is that something you believe? Um, well, for, let, let's break that down because that's two different questions. So okay. do I believe we can have it all? Um, no, I know we can have it all because we are it all. Yeah. Um, and then the second part is, will there need to be pain and sacrifice? The answer is yes, because as a child, you actually learn the opposite. You learn to tap into and live from the energies of fear, which is correlated with the energies of force instead of the energies of love, which is more correlated with the energies of power, your own divine power and ability to create and manifest whatever you want in life. And so will there be pain and sacrifice? The answer is yes. The pain and the sacrifice will need to be literally the death of that old you and the birth of the new you. And that is, I believe, the human journey for us all. Are you a fan of uh, Dr. Hawkins' work in human consciousness? And oh, all that? my God. I was going to say, everything you said there is power versus force, truth versus falsehood, like his books, right? Yeah, but you know, funny story, man. Funny story. And, and this is... A lot of people don't believe me when I say this, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. Please. Um, I, um, it was my two years ago on my birthday, Th three years ago on my birthday, on my birthday. And one of the things that I would do was I would host these massive mushroom ceremonies at my house back then because plant medicine changed my life changed my life, ayahuasca, mushrooms, so forth and so on. And so on that store, on that, on that journey, I, I had an, a, a, an incredible experience. Um, you know, the normal dosage that a human being takes when they're with much sitting with mushrooms is three and a half grams. So I took my three and a half grams. There were like 20 of my friends. This is what I wanted to do for my birthday. I, to this day, I host an awaken every year on my birthday because my, my life is about helping other people, right? And so in, in my own way, this is how I was doing that. Well, about the journey is about to end halfway through the journey. And um, it was such an incredible journey that I go to the guy. It wasn't the shaman. It was the shaman's helper. And I said, hey, I want more, right? <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and this is a particular guy, by the way, this particular guy is one of the most famous guitarists on planet earth. I won't say his name, okay. um, but he's played <laughs> with Eric Clapton. He's played with, I mean, everybody, everybody. Yep. And he looks at me and he has another bag of three and a half grams and he gives it to me. And I, I didn't know, I didn't know the amount. I thought he was going to yep. give me half a gram or something. So now brother, it I'm just doubled seven, up. I'm seven grams in. Yeah. I don't know if you know what that is, but that is that is like get ready you're about to have an ego death. Yeah. So so in that experience what I started to see was I started to see my life as a puzzle. A puzzle of emotions, a puzzle of thoughts and a puzzle of feelings, all of them limiting. And it's as if it was like a like a like a matrix, like a jigsaw puzzle that one thought and feeling connected to another thought and feeling, right? And it was the dopest experience of my life, but the scariest experience of my life because I thought I was going to die. Mm -hmm. And um, and I did die in very many ways. And so, like, you know, like all of a sudden I would see and feel shame. And then my body would start shaking, shaking. And I would start looking at all the places in which I had shame in my life, like shame around my belly, shame around who I really am, right? And then I would rest for a little bit. I was like, oh, man, that was intense, right? Guilt, all the places, you know, guilt about my divorce, guilt about, you know, not living with my children, you know, guilt about, you know, whatever guilt. And then like... Sure. It was like one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then the message that I got very clearly was that like at the end of all of this, 
I was going to die. And I was going to basically come back as Neo from the Matrix. True story. Yeah. It's actually wow. what happened. I'm saying my goodbyes to people and I'm telling everybody, people are like, what are you talking about? You're not, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm going to leave, but don't worry. I'll be back. And I'll be back a better me than ever, you know, whatever the case may be. Why am I bringing this up? It was the most profound experience of my life. And then like four months later, I attracted the book letting go by Dr. David mm -hmm. Hawkins. And when I'm reading the map of consciousness, I'm, I got cold. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, that is what I experienced in the journey. So, so when I share what I share, it's not, I don't share anything from like a mental perspective. I share from like, I lived it. Mm -hmm. I lived it. I don't know. I don't know if I can ever truly articulate what it means and the difference between reading something and living it. And so that's what I'm, yeah, man. Yeah. A hundred percent. Isn't that why you feel like, uh, you know, we deal with a lot of sick people. So my background is, you know, my father was a doctor. My mother was a doctor in psychology. And, you know, we have a medical treatment with the center and we treat people from around the world, some of the sickest people. And a, a lot of them deal with those negative emotions, those lower consciousness levels. Sure. Until yeah. you address those, you can't truly heal, no, can you? No, man, no. <clears throat> so interesting that you brought that up. But what got me into all of this work was my mother's death. My mother died of cancer and, and she died of lung cancer at like 56. She was really, really young. And, you know, um, I, 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 you know, the doctors would tell me that, you know, you know, she has lung cancer, it, it had a met metastasized, so forth and so on. And, and I, you know, back then I hadn't done any of this work yet. So I was like, this doesn't make sense. Like, how does a woman, a young woman get lung cancer? And she never smoked a cigarette in her life, in her life. How does this happen? And then the more and more that I started to realize the power of emotions, the more and more we started to realize you store grief in your lungs. Yes. Right. And so my mom's mom passed away when she was only 13 days old. So my mom's entire life was filled with grief, you know, mm -hmm. and, and this is where I started the work that I do because I started to realize how many people are getting sick. And I started to realize how many people are not living in their fullest potential. And I started to realize that human beings are walking around, not even understanding who it is that they truly are. And, and this is where I, in the discovery of who I am and the discovery of my power, I thought, man, if, if I was living like this, how about the other 8.2 billion humans on the planet, you know? And, 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 and brother, once you see that Casper, it's like, you can't unsee it. You can't, you can't, you can't, you, you can't sit still because you realize and you remember how you used to live your life. And you realize there's just too many people out there that they're not making the money that they should be making. They're not living in the health that they should be living in. And they, they're not living in the relationship that she, they should be living in. And a hundred percent of it, brother. A hundred percent of it is connected to the thoughts, feelings, and emotions that they have been come accustomed to living from because of their upbringing and their relationship with their parents. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really interesting to hear you talk about it because it sounds like a lot of like Dr. Hammer's work, new Germanic medicine of connecting those emotions, grief, especially lungs, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it kind of shows that so much of disease starts on this level that we just don't address. And if we do in conventional medicine, we usually medicate that and just subdue it, but it's still there. You're not getting rid of the shame by taking a pill. You That's have to right. truly address it. So I guess my question kind of is for people listening and everything, how do we start to address our traumas? Like, what do we start to do? Do we start to uh, even, you know, just ask those questions? Am I dealing with shame right now? Am I dealing with guilt? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. So I, I would like to answer that in two parts. Um, yes. Part number one is the flip side. The flip side is, is that what we as human beings don't realize is that we are literally living in the energy of fear here in the 3D world, okay? The entire 3D world is all built on control, power, and fear. And so when we are living in that energy, we are constantly afraid. Afraid of what? Afraid of anything and everything. We don't realize we're afraid of being accepted. We're afraid of being ourselves. We're afraid of being judged. We're, trust me, if you're a human being, listen to me and listening to me, and you have not done this work yet, you're living in fear. 
I'm, I'm just going to give it to you like point blank, right? Okay, so now, so the second part is how do you begin to do this work? Well, I'll tell you how I began to do this work by asking me myself the toughest questions that I could ask myself and dealing with the fear of the answer. When I started to ask myself questions like, am I really happy in my relationship? See, see, most of us are afraid to ask ourselves that. Most of us are, are, are at, at, as men, by the way, because men and the masculine is polygamous in nature and women by nature are monogamous. This is just our nature. This is the yin and the yang of life, right? And there's a journey for a man. There's a journey for a man in, 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 in harnessing that energy and being able to sit still in the beauty of a relationship and being able to look at the relationship as medicine for his life, right? There's a, there's a journey in that. It's a deep journey, right? But if you're a man sitting around and you're, you're secretly struggling with pornography, for example, and you're secretly, you know, every time you go to a party, you're walking in with your wife and you're looking to the left and you're looking to the right because you're trying to look for another woman. And you're, you just, you're constantly on Instagram looking at women and so forth and so on. There's some shit going on inside of you. Oh yeah. Now you think that's normal. But that's not normal. And I'm telling you that because that used to be me in my previous marriage. So when I finally had the guts, the guts to ask myself the question, are you happy? Like, are you really happy? I mean, it, you know, it came like a lightning rod, but you already know the answer. That's what came to me. Yeah. You already know the answer. And then I was like, oh, well, well, you know, I was trying to avoid answering it. And, and my ego just, was just say the answer. You might as well just say it because you already know the answer. Like on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being outstandingly happy and zero being you're miserable. What are you? And my ego said like six. But then when my ego said six, my true self stuff, come on, you know what the real answer is. It was like a three or a four. I was miserable. I was absolutely miserable. And this is why I'm so passionate about this work, right? Is because if you're miserable in your relationship, let's just start there. You are unnecessarily creating inflammation, stress, and both of those lead to disease in your body. I'm not telling you leave the relationship. I'm telling you leave the bullshit that you're living. Leave the lack of courage that you're living and come face to face with your partner and look at each other eye to eye. I'm straight up. This is what we do at Awaken, right? Eye to eye, knee to knee, belly to belly, heart to heart, without any judgment, without any fear, with the, just, just, just talk, just talk and share what is actually happening inside of you. Baby, I don't like it when you walk into my, my room and ask me if I look fat in my pants when you actually look fat. But I can't tell you the truth because you're so emotionally all jacked up in your emotions that I, I would like to just tell you, yeah, baby, you look fat, but I'm willing to support you. I'm willing to walk with you every day. I want to see these are like, you know, the little things that we deal with as human beings that we're just afraid of. We're afraid of, right? Baby, I, I'm afraid to speak my truth to you because you're always angry and defensive. And I, I don't feel like I have a, a, a right to share my voice. You know, or on the woman's side, maybe I, I don't feel like I'm your priority. Like you, you're always at work and, and, and I know you say it's for me, but it doesn't feel like that. Now watch, will it take pain and sacrifice? Here, here's where the journey begins. Because you're so conditioned to live in your ego and you're so conditioned to live in fear that your brain immediately will come up with a defense. So immediately you will not listen to the person. And when you're living in love and when you're trapped into your absolute highest self, here's what you will do. You will listen to that person and whatever they say, it's right. It's right. You know why? Because if it's right for them and it's their truth, that means it is true. And so your job as a partner is to listen and to understand. And then maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, when you could learn to stop being defensive, when you can learn to stop being argumentative, when you can learn to stop being hostile, maybe, just maybe, when you show, when you are the one that taps into your heart, maybe, just maybe, and you show them the space that you're willing to listen and to work on some of the things that they're bringing up, maybe, just maybe, they'll do the same. That's how you hear your relationship. That's how you hear your emotions. That's how you hear your body. That's one way to start doing the work.
Absolutely. And, and to go back to that initial point of asking yourself questions, I find it wild how few of us actually stop and, and ask ourselves questions. I believe there's like a trending meme on TikTok right now. I was reading an article. I'm not really on there too much, but it was all about a woman who like stopped looking at her phone while she's walking and created a trend of just being in her own mind and, and asking questions and things like that. Like, it's so weird for people to be like, wait, you weren't on your phone. You weren't listening to this. You weren't distracted and you were actually asking yourself questions and seeing, am I happy today? What's going on with me today? Where are my emotions? So few of us do that. It's, it's, it's the norm to be distracted and never ask ourselves those questions. But brother, that is the system. The, the, right. the system has been created to keep us in our minds because as long as we are in our minds, we can be programmed and we can be controlled. Yeah. And people have to understand that, you yeah. know, I hate to bring it up, but I have to bring it up as a, as a perfectly wonderfully, like you have to give them hats off orchestrated oh, yeah. incident that reshaped the world caused trillions of dollars of wealth to transfer hands, uh, uh, um, um, decrease popula population and, and cause people to lose a lifetime's worth of their hard work and effort. You got to give them to them. They, they made trillions of dollars. And I listen, and if you're listening to me right now, and that upsets you good because you're not upset by me because if you were in your power, right? If you were your own aligned sovereign being, if you ate a healthy diet, if you had low inflammation, no low stress in your life, if you created your own self-independence financially, it impacted you nothing. If anything, what it made you do is it made you go, wow, I can't believe they're getting away with this. Right. You lived in the energy of fear. You probably, I'm not, by the way, I say this with love because it's going to happen again. And it's up to you to either stay being that version of yourself that you're being or to adjust or to maybe listen to what I'm about to say. But if you were that human being that was living in fear, the likelihood of you getting that shot once, twice, three times, four times, or five times is pretty high. The likelihood of you being manipulated by losing your job, the likelihood of you being manipulated by the fear of death, all of that was pretty high. That is a tell all sign that you are living in fear because when you're living in love, when you're living in the energy of love, you're living in your truest power. And nothing outside of you can move you or manipulate you. Sit with that. And the same way that I asked you to listen in relationship is the way that I'm asking you to listen now. Don't fight me. I mean, you can if you want. Don't judge. Don't, don't, don't come up with your battle. This is when you're living in the mind. Just sit and meditate and go like this. Okay, wait a minute. This is really bothering me. This is triggering me. Is there any truth to this? Hold, 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 hold. Watch your body react. Watch the energy of fear start to leave you and go down that rabbit hole. Allow yourself the courage to go down that rabbit hole because the easy thing to do is to fight and say, no, nah, that's one of the conspiracy theorist fucking people. Nah, 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 nah. Stay there and watch in the next 15 years when it happens again. Mark my words. Let me flip that for a second because I completely agree that, you know, we were shown how easy it is to manipulate. And again, I, this goes back a little bit to experience. My parents grew up in a socialistic, you know, a USSR. Poland at the time and was completely controlled and they were told what to think, not to say certain things. They knew it. They escaped there and came here for a better. And they saw this right away as what it was. They didn't question. They were just like, no, I'm not falling for this. I've been there before. But a lot of people haven't been there before and haven't experienced it. Sure. So in some ways, I can even say, OK, you've never been there. You haven't been told this by your parents. You weren't warned. I get Fair it. Enough. Hopefully you could learn the next time around and become right. more aware of this. But for the people that are out there that were labeled a conspiracy theorist that were, you know, attacked and censored and everything, how do you stay in that place of love? Because me, myself, after a while, I was like, enough of this bullshit. Like, I just want to voice myself and I'm getting attacked, deplatformed, like people ridiculing me. 
I could lose my business. I could be yeah. all of these things. Like, how do well, we stay yeah. in that area of love? So I'll tell you how I did it. I completely disassociated from it. Yep. I, I made it my mission and purpose to help people find the truth within themselves. And then when they found the truth within themselves, then they would see what they needed to see. In other words, it wasn't my job to try to convince you of anything. If it were, if you were on your journey and you, I mean, I mean, but we, we're not even talking about what's happening right now in America. Like I'm yep. not even started with that. Right. If, if you are in a space in your journey where you do not see what, what is happening, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not the one to convince you of that. What I am the one to do is to help remove some of the energy of fear that's in your life, to help remove some of the limiting thoughts, feelings, and emotions that you deal with. And as you remove that, what I have found is a process of self-actualization happens. Mm -hmm. Because you see, the real key to this all is that all of us are looking to be loved. All of us are looking to have peace. That's a return to the heart. That's a return to the feminine, right? And so when we do that, when we drop out of here and into here, then we, we're, it's like we're awakened. It's like we're like, oh, wow, I, ne I, never, I never saw this before. I never saw how beautiful the plants are and the trees and the sky. And like, why am I going for a walk? And, and do I have these radioactive things on my ears? And I, why do I care what the amount of steps with a massive satellite on my wrist that is jacking up my blood vessels and all of this. Why, why am I, why am I, why don't I just connect with nature? As a matter of fact, matter of fact, isn't that what they used to do 200 years ago? And then, you know, you, you just start to become aware of all of this stuff because you, you're no longer afraid, man. You're no longer in this constant cycle of thinking. This is why people can't meditate. They sit there and they, they have to pop out of it because there's no peace, right? And so what 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 I what I did this is where I, we we created awaken for mm -hmm. we created awaken to help people heal with the three biggest traumas of their life sexual trauma uh, 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 and the 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 disconnection of of energy and the unforgiveness from the two most important human beings in their lives with the which is their mother and father if you can heal your mother and father wound. And I'm talking anything, anything between you and your mother and father, because when you were a baby, your mother was the feminine energy of God to you. Mm. Your father was the masculine energy of God to you. Think about it. The, the, your whole life was dependent upon yes. these two human beings, right? So if you're growing up one, two, three years old, and these people are fighting and arguing and they're manipulating you and they're telling you to shut up, and then, how could you possibly live in love? How could you possibly not doubt yourself when it's time to start a business? How could you, how could you possibly believe that you are powerful and abundant? So the journey is about going backwards and healing some of this stuff. So that's why I created the event. I created the event because when I started doing ayahuasca, mushrooms, all of this stuff, I thought to myself, the world needs this, but not everybody's ready to do plant medicine. So I created a three-day experience that gives you that same type of experience and healing without any substances. And that's what we do. Let's talk about that event a little bit. Awaking your highest self. You said it's a three-day event. Is part of that what you're talking about right now, this reprogramming of beliefs and programs in your, in your mind that you don't even know are happening on autopilot that are holding you back from your highest self? Yeah, absolutely. So I spoke about relationships for a little bit and there's a lot there, like all men are dogs or like, I can never trust a man or like, you know, uh, the woman is eventually going to like, you know, whatever, all of this stuff, you learn that, but let's talk about money, right? Let's talk about money. So the same way we have limiting beliefs around relationships is the same way that we have limiting beliefs about money. And so what the mind does is the mind is constantly worried about how you're going to make something happen, how people are going to respond to what it is that you do, if people are going to accept it or not. Uh, it, the mind is constantly overanalyzing because the, what the mind is trying to do is the mind is trying to keep you safe. That's the, that's, this is what people don't understand is that the mind is actually trying to keep you safe. It's like, I honor you if you got 75 jabs, 
because all your mind was trying to do was keep you safe. So I, I honor you. I, I'm not, nobody's right or wrong here. We're just at different places in the journey. That's all it is. So when it comes to 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 um to, to, to money, for example, right? The mind will go, no, 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 don't leave your job. No, no, no. If you leave your job, remember what your dad told you. If you leave your job, you're gonna lose everything. Right? I know you've always wanted to do this little idea, this little idea to create chapstick or this business of creating wallets or this restaurant or whatever numerous amount of ideas human beings come up with. But if you do that, you're going to lose everything because that, that's what your dad told you. Well, that could happen. But even if it did, what would you learn from that experience? How would it make you stronger? How would it make you more resilient? Is it that bad of a thing? Could it make you more powerful? Could it teach you something that you need to learn? Could it allow you the resilience to bounce back and try again differently? Mm. See, there's all sorts of different possibilities, right? Or what if I'm an influencer? What if I'm a new and I want to, you know, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to start a YouTube channel, but oh my God, that's going to require a camera and that, that requires a lot of money. And, you know, where am I going to get that money from? Right. And my God, this stuff is so expensive. Like it's the government's fault. <laughs> it's Trump's fault. It's Biden's fault. Whoever's fault you want to blame it on. It's Jeff Bezos' fault. It's Elon. I hate Elon Musk. No. They're all just mirrors. They're all just mirrors for the greatness inside of you that is waiting to unlock. And the camera is an opportunity for you to grow. Because, yeah, it's expensive. I get that. But if you wanted it bad enough, let's just be honest. If you wanted it bad enough, couldn't you go drive Uber? three times a week for the next 90 days and find a way to get the camera. You see, it's never about the resources. It's always about the resourcefulness. But when you are trapped in fear, you make it about the resources and you, you stop, you stop yourself right there. And you, you cannot see past that. Or maybe finally it's about making a video. And so you're with the video camera and you're, you want to make a video and you know you have something wonderful to share with the world and you, but oh my God, but what are they going to think? And what if they don't like it? And what if it doesn't work? And what if they make fun of me? That could happen. Or what if they love it? Or heck, what if they don't love it? But it teaches you how to change the video. And next time you can make it a little bit better. And then you experience it and you break it down even further. And you start to break down those walls, the belief systems that said, I couldn't. Well, maybe I can now, right? I did Bingo. it. Yeah, a few people laugh, but Bingo. I could do better. Bingo. And that's why I say money is a frequency. Money is just energy. energy. Money is just a reflection of the energy and the frequency that you live with. So if you can heal that frequency and you can heal that energy, I swear to you, I, 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 will, I will pay off your house. This is how confident I am because I've helped thousands of people now literally go from 90,000 a year to a million dollars a year or, or even 200,000 a year. It's, it's whatever you want. No one is stopping you but you. But once you remove these limiting beliefs, it's like, boom, M money. Money is not the issue. We're the issue. Yeah. Too many of us live in a victimhood scarcity mindset, I feel like. And it leads us down, not just in the, the respect to money and finances, but to sickness, to illness, because right? Isn't that a big one where belief systems start to get in our head of, you know, I'll always be sad. I can't be healthy. The doctor told me this. I'm going to have it the rest of my life. Oh, it's a 30% chance of survival. Like all of it's, that. It, it's, it's genetics. It's passed down. Right. No, it's energetically passed down. Yeah. It's nobody in your family healed all of those emotional wounds. And you get to be the one to do it. Do you know how afraid I used to be of cancer and illness and all of this stuff? And now I feel like I, I, I mean, I'm just going to go and say, I feel like it's impossible. Because I take care of myself. I, I feel like if I want to live to 120, I can live to 120 or even more. Yeah. But, 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 but 
I'm going to say this, Casper, like I've done the deepest work on myself. I mean, I don't know anybody. I know, I know maybe one person that has done as deep of a work as I have. I'm, I'm just going to, I, I, that's a lie. All the people that I work with now, like, yeah, they, they go, you know, some of them, they go deep and they, they just become the most peaceful, brightest, loving, abundant, unstoppable human beings. Because all they needed was someone to show them the way. That's it. Yeah. And so, yeah, what is health? Health is a reflection just like money. <laughs> health is literally like money. It's literally like the partner that you're in relationship with. All of it is an external reflection of what is happening inside of you. Yep. That's so it. it. It, it's funny, Danny, because you brought up Neo and the Matrix earlier. I used to have this discussion with some of my enlightened friends that would at least entertain this. But I was like, if you truly believe, like truly, without any doubt that you could fly, I'm pretty sure you could make that happen. And people would just be like, that's wild, man. What do you want? I was like, I, but most people will never believe that, right? And there's I, always an inkling of like, hey, you know, the law of physics says you can't this gravitational pull. Like, I don't know, man. Like. <laughs> there's well, something I mean, to I, the power I, of belief right which makes you do miraculous things and i'm not going to say that i truly believe people will fly and everything although i will put that on the table of a discussion to make points well i think jesus did what he did yeah how, how, how do you think jesus created the miracles that he created and while we're on that subject what do you think jesus's message actually was jesus's message and why he died was because he was teaching everybody to return to self. Because when you return to self, you return to your gift, you return to your power, and then you have the ability to heal other people. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it usually go that way that you need to start with yourself and then that will then in turn impact others around you? If you do this, what I have noticed in the work that I do is when one person heals, they literally don't even have to lift a finger. Their energy, their frequency, mm -hmm. their vibration, literally the closest people to them, something starts to change in them as well. It's like they, it's like this, this, it, this magnetic wave that like starts to go in the family. I've seen entire families heal. I've seen, it's yes. just, it's just magical, magical. Yeah. I've always said a, a true heal where it's not just like symptom suppression and feeling a little better, but actual healing that happens on all levels from spiritual right. down to the physical right. is like an alchemical transformative thing that will yeah. absolutely resonate outwards. Absolutely. And, and that's how you know you're healing because you right. yourself will change. You won't just be like, oh, the headache's gone. I'm healed. That's right. not healing. That's just taking a pill and reducing, you know, the pain or something or subsiding it. But true healing is is a transformation, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny that you mentioned this. I, I the whole thing about the pill. I want to I want to tell you two stories. Um, number one will be the lighter one, which um, <clears throat> at this last awaken, uh, my friend, my friend Reese, my friend Reese came up to me, and when I met Reese, Casper, listen to me. This was a woman that when she talked to you, she talked to you like this. Fidgety. Because the mind is hyperactive. Mm -hmm. And so I know that is a deep, that's a deep mother wound is what that is. Because the mother represents the heart. Right? Sure enough, the, 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 the more, the deeper and the deeper and the deeper that you go, the deeper you realize that the mom was like competitive with her, mentally and emotionally abusive with her. So think about that as a beautiful little girl. When your mother is carrying that energy, what do you think you're gonna you're gonna try to find a way to like defend yourself and protect yourself? Because it's like your life is at stake. Your life is at stake. And now you see Reese and she's like this. Mm -hmm. she's this is the deepest work. And then you know what came with all of that? She just told me this at this last awakening. She'd been to three of them. Uh she's she's in my inner circle program. By the way, I'm not plugging anything. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. I'm just offering, hopefully, that I, I, if you're out there listening to this, like you can do this too. 
You yeah. can do this too. And I'm sure you help people with this. There's a lot of wonderful human beings out there that can help you do what I'm about to say. But she told me, she said something. She says, Danny, at the last awakening, you, 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 it was like a prophetic message. And I said, you all need to get off these prescription meds. They have no place in your life. Mm-hmm. See, no, nobody's ever told people that. You know, and she, she walks up to me. She goes, I, I used to take like, like 20 pills and like they're they're gone i don't need anything anymore right Mm -hmm. a second person i remember this was three years back she was walking in a cane and she used to take 40 medications a day literally she was just a mess and now she's cane free medication free what was the issue she was sexually abused she was sexually abused by two of her uncles and then when she went and told her mother the mother didn't believe her Another friend, I literally remember the day he was in my car and uh, we were going to do our first journey together. Um, Obviously, there's been way more work that we did together, but he had a stint in his chest because he suffered from this, like some weird autoimmune disease where like every four months he would just get inflamed. His esophagus would flame up, his face would, would blow up. He'd have to go to the hospital because it was this weird thing where his body would just react and 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 they had to like give him like a like a like a, a like a dose of medicine to calm everything down and um he was in the car and he pulled out his little bags of medication this is like a 38 year old dude yeah and by then i already knew uh uh-uh, uh uh-uh. I, I i don't give a shit what doctors say i know i know the issue i know the issue there's there's a there's a there's a deep parent wound here Right. Sure enough, I asked a couple of questions. The father used to beat the living shit out of him when he was three, four and five years old. So again, again, what is a little boy to do when the when the masculine representation of God to him is beating his living daylights out of him? Now you understand where all these autoimmune diseases come from. Guess what? Six months later, the stint is gone. No more medication. He's done because he healed his heart. Yeah. He healed his emotional wounds, man. And this is what's available to every single human being out there. Do you feel that you need to be in the right mindset to attend the Awaken event and really get the most out of it? I, I, feel, I, I feel like this. I feel like something happens in every human being's journey that brings them to their knees. Mm-hmm. Something. It's a, a death uh, um, a loss of a job, uh, a breakup, s- something. And, and that's because that's what happened to me. Because before my mom passed away, if you would have told me this, I don't, nah, I don't need that. <laughs> I'm, a, I, I'm a multimillionaire. I'm successful. This guy's, this guy's crazy. Get ready. Get, get, get ready. Get ready when all your money is stripped from you. Get ready when your mother is taken from you. Get ready from where when your wife leaves you because you don't pay any attention to her. Get get ready. Get ready when you realize you have no relationship with your children. Get ready for all of that. And when you when that finally hits you deep to answer your question, man, you just have to be ready to go all in for yourself to find your truth. That's it. That's that's all I need from people. As long as you come with an open mind and a humble heart, I promise you, you will have a spiritual experience that will blow your mind. You will see angels. You will revisit your ancestors. You're literally, your ancestors will come to you and heal parts of you. I had at this last awakened, a lady say, I I could just never, never understood why I always felt so alone. And my aunt that passed away came to me and pulled me out of the trash can. And I remember that I was told that when I was a little baby, I guess my parents left me in a trash can and that's how my my new parents found me. Casper, it gets me emotional because it's like, yeah. it's like how many human beings are dealing with, with this, yeah. with these wounds that they don't even remember. And when you journey spiritually, we use meditation and breath work in a profound way. It's like you remember what you no longer remember, and then you get to heal that, and your life is just 
Yeah, it likes to change forever. Yeah, and it sounds like you're using so many different, you know, systems and modalities to do this. Such a holistic. I'm hearing like family constellation work, past life regression, meditation, Everything. breathing, you know, balancing the ANS. Like all of that is happening, and that's Three what you days. need when you heal. Like you can't that's just pick one and be like, "That's it. It's going to heal everyone." Oh, like no. you got to do this in a holistic manner, which is very cool. Absolutely, man. And you know, and I and I will say this, and I will say this, like if you go just research me, like yep. if, if you're out there listening, like I used to hold this event called Relentless. And one of the wounds that I used to have to heal that I really think if you look at most like events that are being held, there is a secret energy and desire that has not been healed by the individual where if you look closely, you will see that the reason why they're holding the event is, yeah, they want to help. Yeah. But that's really bullshit. What they really want is they want you to admire them, like them, and need them. That is the underlying issue of most you know, teachers, healers, influencers, whatever. And I'm telling you this, I've seen this at the deepest le levels. I've seen this at the shamanic levels too. And, and what I can tell you is I think what is causing so much transformation in people is that the entire purpose of the event, you could, you could feel it from the moment we started, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with you finding you. Because if you need me or if you need anyone, you still haven't gotten there. Everything that you need and everything that you have ever needed is inside of you. And all we want to do is just to help guide you back to you. And um, yeah, that's, that's where the magic happens. Hey, man, I really love that because there are a lot of people out there that just have their own experience and say, hey, you have my experience, you'll get better too, when that is not the truth. Everyone has their own journey and their own experience. Right. We right. could only help them to realize that that's it. They have okay. to actually do the work. And that mm -hmm. is true healing. So, Danny, thank you so much for your work. Where could people learn more about you? Instagram is, you know, yeah. Danny Morel uh, or DannyMorel.com. Or if you want to come to Awaken, we've got yeah. one coming up in New York. We've got oh, one nice. coming up in London. For those of you out in Europe, uh, we, we'll, we'll, I think we're going to have, yeah, I think those are the next two coming. Uh, DannyMorel.com backslash Awaken. You're worldwide and this is your mission, right? Impact 3.5 billion people. So, so you're, you're on your mission and hey man, keep up the great work. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah, and as you heard, go to dannymorell.com and look into the Awaken event. And until next time, continue writing your own healing story.